today to talk to you about robots and coding in the elementary grades. I am currently a teacher for kindergarten through fourth grade. I see about 350 students each week and I love promoting STEM, technology, coding, robotics, all hands-on and problem-solving activities in my classroom. I hope what I tell you can help inspire you to use these items in your classroom because they work even for kindergarten or preschool, and they can be used differently for the different grade levels. I'm going to start with the youngest grade and go up. So the first robot I'm going to introduce you to is Codapillar. This is a very basic coding robot that allows students to program which direction it's going to move using these pieces. So these pieces get added on to the back of the robot which make it look like a caterpillar. So students can choose between straight, right, or left, and there's extensions that could be added to make it turn a certain degree and other features. But the basic use of this robot would be to plug this in. It's pretty easy for the students to plug in, so it's great for younger grades. And it lights up and it lets students know that it's gonna move this direction. Students can add as many pieces as they want and they can create a pattern and a path that it's going to follow. They come, it comes with a start and a stop so that the students can program where it's gonna start and where it's gonna stop. You can also do things like add obstacles around your classroom and have the students try to program this code pillar to go around or follow a certain path. They are fun. They do make a lot of loud noise if you do have a lot of, of them at once or a, um, a lot of students in your classroom. But it's a great starting item for beginning coders. The coder pillar again works by adding the pieces on the back. Once you connect the piece, it will automatically light up and then you know that it's ready. The pieces are good, they have a USB connection and it's very sturdy so a student really, really wouldn't break it. But you can see, I'll just show you how it travels. It lights up and the eyes do too. And then it starts going. <laughs> the next item I'm gonna show you is the robot mouse. This is great for kindergarten, first grade, second grade. My students love it. This mouse works with direction. So it's teaching students the concept that a code is a set of directions that the computer or the robot must follow. It comes with these great cards, which helps students lay them out and kind of organize what they want their code to look like. Students will be able to press the buttons and add a lot of different code to one um, path so that it, it, it's able to follow along as you go. I write on mine, if you can see, just to help the students. So the yellow button is what they're gonna press when they wanna start new, and then the red is for stop if they make a mistake, and green is go. So it's very simple for the students to use. When you buy the kit, it comes with little um, blocks that the students can lay out with bridges and some obstacles and they can create their own maze and send the mouse through it to get to a piece of cheese. You can also make your own up by printing different pictures or having students draw out something on a large poster board and then have the mace move, um, the robot move around. I do not recommend allowing it going on a carpet or anything that could be bumpy, it could mess up the wheels. They are pretty sensitive, so you wanna keep it on either a flat surface, like a poster board or something laminated, or allow them to use it on the blocks that come with it. Other than that, I would be pretty careful with it. But it is a great starter robot for the younger grades. It's easy to use and they absolutely love it. It's very similar to Bebot if you are familiar with that one. 
So with these activities, you can use these, you can make up your own cards that relate to the different mats and you can have students program where the robot is going to move. Once the students pick a card, they will just program the robot to move accordingly and press go and it will move along different spots. The next robot I want to show you is the Ozobot. The Ozobots are very tiny as you can see, but these are a great robot for grades 1, 2, 3, 4, and up. They work by following a black path, so they are a little different. There's no buttons on them. The students aren't pressing anything to control it. Instead, they're drawing. So the Ozobot is programmed to always follow a black line. And then there are certain color codes that mean different thing that the robot knows. So you can see here, if you wanted the robot to go to the left, you would want to color in green, black, red. So everything goes with colors. I create my own mazes to help students because sometimes they have trouble drawing the black lines, the certain thickness, or coloring in the colors correctly. So a maze like this is easy to create on your computer. You can give this to students and then allow them to fill in these empty spots with the color code that they want. The Ozobot is programmed to always just go at random when it gets to an intersection. It won't know to turn right or left or go straight unless you tell it. So this helps kind of guide them. I created something like this to help my students practice just specifically turn directions. These are um, easy to create. They help. Usually when I start with Ozobots, I have my students just only use black lines and write their name or kind of just draw a path so they get used to how to program this. You can use any type of marker, but you want to be careful with markers with a sharp point you want the students to lean on a side so that it comes out a bit thicker. You also want to remind them to be careful when they are coloring that they don't color the wrong um, colors or merge them together because then the Ozobot might not read it correctly. Or what? To turn the Ozobot on, you're just going to press this side button and again they move up along the path. So this one should read that code and it's moving towards the right, towards the object. Let's try this one. It follows and it's turning towards the object because I told the code to go left. Now it first... The next robots I'm going to talk to you about are Spheros. Spheros come in many different forms. This is the Spiro Spark. It's a bit bigger. You can see it in my hand. And these robots work with an iPad or a tablet. You need some sort of device to use the app to program. They have no buttons on them, but instead students are going to use block coding to program the robots. This is the Sphero Mini, so you can see that compared to this one, it is smaller. These ones are a bit less expensive, so if you don't mind the size, you might be able to purchase more of these instead of the bigger ones for more students in your class to use. And this is the special BB-8 edition that they made up and I love Star Wars so I just had to get this one. But you can see here is the app that it would work with. So you can see that it has these blocks and it allows students to program a lot. You can program the movement, the light that's inside, it can make sound through the iPad, um, lots of different things. So the students can create their own program. What I do for Spiros is usually take duct tape and kind of just lay a path along my floor in an empty space. And the students then have to program it to move along the path. You can create obstacles around your room and have it the Spiro go through that. Students can even use like a thick poster board and create their own obstacle course with recycled materials and have the Ozobot go around and go through. So there's lots that you can do with them. You can see that they're just gonna pull these blocks over. And this is for a bit more advanced. I use this for my third graders and up. They need to um, understand how to add the block coding to 
this and they also need to understand degree and speed. It does work by saying the ozobot is going to move for five seconds at 180 degrees or at 90 degrees. So it's not as easy as the other robots would just simply write left and it moves a certain amount um, just automatically. Instead, these ones can really do just about anything, which requires a bit more thinking and problem solving. But it is a great robot, especially for the upper grades. Another tool that you can use is an Osmo. If you don't have an Osmo yet, this is a great device. It works with this piece here, which has a mirror and it reflects. So the students don't actually use the iPad to play the games, but they use different pieces. They do offer an awesome coding game. So if you do already have an Osmo, you might wanna check out these two kits to involve some coding in your classroom. So what the students have to do is they have to work through some levels to get um, the character to move to different pieces. It's pretty interesting because they have all of these blocks, so it gets them into block coding like you'll see on different um, internet sites. And the students use these pieces, they can turn this, it's movable, and they will tell the character what to do. So if I click here, I can show you a bit. You have your play button. So I would want the character to move forward. If I take this and you have different choices, do I want him to walk two times, three times? What's he going to do? So I'm going to add um, walk to the right two times. I'm going to lay this down in front and I'm going to add the run button, which you'll see in many different games. And when I press read it on the iPad, and you can see that he's moving along. So it's really neat because it's interactive, it's fun, but it is working with code and getting the students to think and problem solve a lot. They have a, a coding jam one, which involves music and lets students code like drums and different instruments and make a song. So it's really cool. Check those out as well. Coding doesn't have to just be on the computer or with robots. You can also do some unplugged coding, which means that you're working with items, not with any device. So this is a great kit. You can find this from the learning resources or on Amazon. It comes with these big blocks and it's kind of like a hopscotch style. Students are making their own little mazes and then they will tell their partner which way they need to turn using these different cards. It's great fun for the students and it also gets them problem solving and thinking. They will use the start arrow and they will have to reach this little robot and they can add certain obstacles like um, picking up the gear and avoiding spots with an X on it and students can use cards like this to kind of jump over the X where they shouldn't be um, standing. So this is great. There are also so many unplugged activities you can use with different um, coding sheets that you can print out. So I will link those below so that you can find those on your own time as well. I want to show you some awesome websites that you can use as well with your class. This is a great site. It is thehourofcode.com with code.org. If you're not familiar with it, they offer so many amazing resources. You can search by grade as you can see here and you can find exactly what you need. It does link you to some other websites but all of these should be free. It works with blocks, coding, and all different things. The other really awesome part is if you make a teacher login you can actually track your students and it comes with full courses. You can see here um, you can look under elementary and see exactly what is offered. If you teach multiple grade levels, it, they filter it by specific grade. So you can start with your kindergartners and first grade and second grade and move them up as they um, get older. There's so much you can do. It comes with lesson plans and ready to go materials. If you haven't tried this, you should definitely check it out. Here's an example of a lesson plan. You can see that it has um, 
links for students, links for teachers, so much materials. Um, if I click here, it's going to give me the warm ups, the videos that go with it, so much information. There are a lot of unplugged activities, which are really awesome. Unplugged means you can do this without a computer. So if you don't have devices for every student, check out these. They come with things that you can print. So you can see here, it comes with a video. You can show a video on one teacher computer. It'll come with an activity that is easy to print that you are um, using with your students. And it still has to do with coding. So what I often do is go through and find just the unplugged ones for when I want to do activity. You can use them from any grade level. They have cool ones like making binary bracelets or coding with lyrics, and it's really helpful. So check that site out. Another great site is Made With Code. This website is geared a bit to for girls just to inspire them, but really anybody can go on it. They have so many projects and the cool thing about their projects is they relate a lot to social media and what's current in the world. So you can see they have like a Mary Poppins activity, they have emoji stuff and music and Yetis, my students love this one. So there's so much you can do. They're easy to use and the kids can save them and download them or upload them to their Google Drive so they have them for the future, whatever they create. They work with different um, blocks here. You're, you're able to drag and then customize various things as you wish. So really easy to use and also free. Another site that I love is Codable. This also works with an app. It is not all free, but there is a lot that is that you can use um, and have no problem with. I also create classes since I teach multiple grade levels and I assign the grade level for that class so that when they do it next year, they're not bored. It changes a bit. Codable is cool, there's this little fuzzy and he kind of goes through a maze. So it it works with directions and the students are picking the arrows to decide how they wanna program it. You can use this in the app form or students can go on the website. It gives you a class code so it's easy for your students to log in. And again, it matches standards and vocabulary. So there's so much that you can include to show administration. You can see here the assignments they um, are very cute students can customize their fuzz with code they can make their own maze so there's really so much that um, they can do you can see how easy it is to assign different levels and it's going through a lot of the basic coding steps and uh, that they need to know so it's great for a little bit older for third grade fourth grade and up i also like cs first this is run by google and this has full curriculums as well. You can make a free teacher account. If you register in with a little bit of time before you wanna start, they will actually mail you content that you can use. They give you these cool like digital passports with stickers that the student that you can give to students and you can give them a sticker as they complete the levels. They have basic activities that might take one period or a couple periods to do like animate students names or create a google logo and then there's other ones that are longer that have about eight activities i use the storytelling one when i wanted to incorporate literacy in my class and students had to plan out their own story but then they went on here and animated it so there's a lot to do and again you can even assign a different one for different students depending on how into coding they are but it gives you full teacher lesson plans written out. It's very great to use and it's all free. So you can come here and like you can see how detailed this is. It will give the students videos to watch and it'll link with some other websites where they will make their projects. But they have a blast with it. My students love it. And from the teacher, side of it you can track your students and see exactly what they did so definitely check out these amazing resources they are free and easy to use and i hope you like them
I just wanted to show you what Codable looks like on an iPad or a tablet. So you can see that this would be from a student's account. There are many different items that they can choose from that go through. They teach you looping and sequence. So it's really great. And the Codable game works basically in this way. You are, students are dragging various arrows to get this fuzzy to go through the maze. As they move on, it gets more difficult and it always gives them this little tip to tell them how they're going to move. There is a couple other apps that I love that are like this, Code Safari, Bo Box Island, um, Code Carts, and I will link those so that you can find them. They are free and they are great, especially for K1 and 2. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you and it gives you a better idea of what kind of robots and how you can incorporate coding into your classroom. Even if you don't have a budget for these type of items, there are still so many free resources that you can find and without a device, you can still do coding. So please go to my website or contact me on social media for more information and for more details on how you can use these robots more specifically in your classroom. You can find me at Miss Tech Queen. I wish you all the best. Please contact me with any questions and happy coding.